Hey everyone, what's happening? My name is Quincy Davis. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching yet another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. If you're new, uh, please consider subscribing because I put out weekly lessons that many drummers have found helpful and I think you will too. In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to improve your jazz drumming instantly. And I mean instantly. And you want to make sure you watch the whole thing because you never know which one of these applies to you. All right? So here we go. 10 ways that you can improve your jazz drumming instantly. So, the first way that you can improve your jazz drumming instantly is by not doing this. To inform the snare drum. Now, sometimes the music calls for it, especially in big band drumming, like some charts at the end of the chart when the whole band's screaming and playing really strong. They want you to play it, do this with a crash. And that's cool. But generally, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that, especially in a small group. But a way to instantly fix that is to replace that with this two and four as a cross stick. It's a much cooler sound. It's not as loud, and it's more uh, authentic to the style. Actually, it's something that the great drummer Sam Woodyard, who played with Duke Ellington, kind of put on the map. So you can do that, which is a really easy way, an instant way, hey, uh, to fix that. Or you can replace it with a shuffle. So you get that backbeat on two and four, but it doesn't sound overly loud and it keeps the, the swing feel kind of intact and clear. Okay, there you go. Hey, I want to make sure that you're aware of a group lesson that I'm offering this coming Saturday. Spots are filling up fast, and it's going to be so much fun. So if you're interested, you want to make sure you sign up right away. The link will be down below. Okay, so what if you actually want to play some stuff in the left hand? Right? All, all the hip stuff, as Bill Cosby said. <laughs> all the hip stuff that jazz drummers play is in the left hand, and it's true. Listen to Art Taylor and Max Roach and Philly Joe Jones, all the greats. They're playing some cool stuff in the left hand. However, I hear a lot of drummers do this. They think of it as chatter and they go. Sound familiar? Is that you? Okay, so we know that that's a little bit much, right? So how can we fix that? Play less. Think about the upbeats. Ah, 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 ah. So you, you can kind of hear how I'm replacing it with a lot of upbeats, right? So that helps kind of re-emphasize or emphasize the, bring out the feel, the feeling of the swing that I'm trying to establish in my ride cymbal. And you can do the same in the bass drum. What do we call this, guys? What do we call it? We call it comp bang, comp bang, comp bang. Count, bang, hey, count, bang, count, bang, ah, 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 oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, oh. Okay, the third way that you can improve your jazz drumming instantly is by not playing your bass drum too loud. Sound familiar? 
And I'm sure many of you do not do this, but there are some of you who still do this or maybe not aware that you're playing the bass drum too loud. And when you play the bass drum too loud, you cover up a lot of things, um, not the least of which is the bass, right? If you do this, then what's the point of having the bass player? Can't hear what they're doing, and they have to actually turn their amp up, and that's never good. So you want to practice playing the bass drum much quieter, and what we, we call this feathering the bass drum, right? It's meant to be felt, but not heard. Heard that before? I didn't come up with it. Also, when you're comping, that's too loud. We always want to balance everything so that the ride cymbal is the strongest. It's not a, it's, it's a, it's kind of a rule, but rules in jazz are meant to be broken. But it's a good default place to start with your ride cymbal above your snare drum and your bass drum. So, so we know that that's too loud. So play your bass drum quieter, play your snare drum quieter. And play those upbeats, play those upbeats. Right? There you go. Sounds better, right? And you can hear the ride some better. Of course, there's going to be some notes that you want to pop out. Especially if you do a, a big fill. So, and then you go back. Okay, the next way you, that you can improve your jazz drumming. Okay, what's, what's wrong with my right hand? Some of you are gonna get it, some of you won't. I'm not lifting using my, my wrist. It's so important that you unhinge your wrist and detach allow your your wrist to kind of break so to speak so that you can get this hinging motion or this this uh pro pronating motion okay i see many drummers doing this so it's like your arm is a is is one muscle with your your hand right you have no wrist it's this very stiff and not only is it stiff physically uh not only does it look stiff but it feels stiff when when you hear it being played so you got to relax allow your wrist to open up and break and pronate and lift the stick with your wrist not your arm in jazz we rarely use our whole arm to play because we don't have to play that loud in rock in, in rock and roll you see drummers playing using their whole arm and their whole body because they're playing much louder it'd be silly to play using smaller muscles in that style but in this style we're playing a lot more um, subtly, right? So all we need is our fingers and our wrists, a little bit of arm. Not, n You don't want to just kind of stiffen up your arm, but you definitely want most of the, the lifting to be done with your wrist. So it looks like this if we're just playing quarter notes. You see that? I hope you can see that. OK. And then if we're going to play the ride cymbal beat, then we involve the, the fingers a little bit. Just a little bit. The quicker the tempo, the more your, your fingers are going to be involved. Okay? The slower tempo, I can almost get away with just playing the ride cymbal beat with my wrist. Okay? But never with my arm. So the next way that you can improve your jazz drumming instantly is to refrain from overusing the toms for your comping. So often I'll hear So I think because they're there, <laughs> 
some drummers feel the need to always play them. But you don't actually need to use your times at all when you're comping. Use your drums or your times selectively to kind of highlight certain rhythms or ideas and to kind of add a little <laughs> pizzazz. I know it's corny. A little pizzazz. Just a little. Very selectively. So like at the ends of phrases. Or distinctive rhythms. You know, distinctive, really, really distinctive melodic rhythms. Uh, if you listen to a drummer like Frankie Dunlop, one of my favorites, he uses the times in such a melodic way um, that it makes sense how he uses them. So, but you got to be careful not to just use them randomly because it doesn't really, it doesn't sonically sound good with what the rest of the band is doing. Um, speaking of comping, um, the other instrument that's comping in a jazz ensemble is the piano. And if you're always playing toms, tonally, you're going to start to cover up their harmony. You know, you're going to start to cover up their chords. So you got to be careful. This is, uh, doesn't really have a pitch. So it's not going to interfere with anything in the band, sonically or harmonically. Okay? So get off those toms and start focusing your comping on the snare drum. But not too much. Don't get too busy. Be selective with the rhythms that you play on the snare drum. Um, and be very selective with when you use your times, okay? Do you know the next way that you can improve your jazz drumming instantly? You know what I'm going to say, right? Stop moving so damn much. I see a lot of drummers who move so much and it just kind of uh, detracts from your ability to really focus on what's important, which is playing the drums, hitting the, the cymbals, playing the cymbals and the drums with good technique and being focused on what you're playing. When you're moving too much, it's like extraneous movement that uh, kind of takes you away from what's the most important thing you're, you're actually doing putting more thought into the way you're moving. Just because you're moving cool doesn't mean that you, you sound good, okay? And in fact, it, it, it most likely means that you don't sound good. <laughs> so just try to relax, try to work on um, sitting still with good posture. Don't lean to one side, that's gonna mess your back up. Um, try to sit upright. You don't have to be stiff and like a statue, but see, this is kind of too stiff if I'm doing this. And this is the other side of it. I see some drummers who don't move at all. You want all your movements to be a result of what you're playing. So I'm moving. I'm sitting up straight, but I'm, I'm also moving with what I'm playing. Ah. So my body's relaxed, right? My upper body's relaxed. My lower body's very stable, uh, allowing my upper body to, to be completely relaxed, um, but not so relaxed that I'm just slouching over. Right? That's no good. So work on relaxing, sitting still, um, allowing your playing to influence how your body moves. And... Uh, sit with good posture all right so the next way that you can improve your jazz drumming instantly is by not swinging your eighth notes I know that sounds uh, kind of contrary to everything that you've probably heard about what you're supposed to do in jazz which is swing your eighth notes but actually I want you to start thinking about your eighth notes as um, and specifically when you solo as straight legato and laid back and I'll show you what I mean I'll play the first way um, where I'm swinging the eighth notes and I'll and I'm sure this is gonna sound familiar one two three four I'll do it again two three four okay 
and now I'm going to play him straighter, laid back, and more legato. But one, two, two measures. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to do it again. And you notice I'm adding accents. One, two, three, four. Ooh, ooh. Right? Or. Right? And if you apply it to actually using jazz language, because these are just kind of random eighth notes strung together. Once you start learning jazz language, it makes even more sense. Now listen to the eighth note feel. As opposed to right. Okay. And when you first start doing this, it might feel uncomfortable, uh, but you'll get used to it, especially if you're listening to all the masters play. You'll notice their eighth notes are not swung per se. They're straight, legato, and lay back. Ever hear this? Ever hear that? That's a drummer who doesn't know how to leave space. Now let's see what it sounds like if I actually strive to leave space in my soloing. One, two. Oh. Right? So I'm trying to create phrases um, using space. When you just deliberately leave space in your solo, you're going to create phrases. That's what we want. Ooh. That's what we want. We want to create phrases. Uh, when you create phrases, then the listener is going to remember better what you're playing. And they're going to, it's like it, something, they're able to compute what you're playing. And it sounds a little more like you're speaking a language. You're actually saying something instead of just playing stuff. Okay? There you go. Leave space. Okay, a lot of drummers are guilty of this, including me, because it's easy to do. It's easy to play too loud. Right? I'm playing way too loud. And it doesn't mean that there aren't times when we need to play strong. Um, but I like to use the word strong instead of loud because loud to me is kind of a negative word. And it I think of people doing this <laughs> when, when things get loud. When you play strong, it gets their attention. And you're showing command over what you're playing. Um, so a, a, a way that you can modify, you can go from playing loud to playing strong is just by adding accents and by not making everything that you play loud. So, like a simple uh, six-stroke row, you know, instead of going. That's pretty loud, you know. But if I go like this, just focus on the accents. You hear the difference? I hope you can, right? And if I move that around. As opposed to, ah, I can't play. So that just kind of sounds loud. So put a little more focus and precision and clarity on your strong playing by, on your loud playing by adding accents, and then it starts to sound just strong, right? And like you're playing with conviction. That's what that's what we want to go for. 
Now, conversely, in my last, um, the tenth way that you can improve your jazz drumming instantly is uh, I hear a lot of drummers who are striving to be musical when they play jazz, which is great. But sometimes they sacrifice the intensity and the the kind of the inner the the burning intensity and flame that you have to have and that you have to play with in order to create that energy um, and and excitement that we want for jazz. So they play a little too passively. Are you a passive drummer? So you might play. Right? And I want you to listen to the difference. I'm going to play the same dynamic, but with a little more intensity and conviction. First of all, see how I sat up straight? I try to make my, my beat a little clearer so you can feel the quarter note. You can hear my two and four on my left foot clearer. Right? And when you're playing at a, at a quieter dynamic, you have to focus on what's most important, which is always the pocket, the groove, the groove, the groove will make you move, <laughs> right? So that's what we're doing, as opposed to playing more stuff and not focusing on what's most important. Now I'm just playing. You hear it? It's like the, the camera comes into focus. Okay, so be careful not to play too passively. We don't want to be a passive drummer because we have to command uh, the, the, the band's attention and take control. And as they say, drive the bus. All right, so there you go. Ten ways of improving your jazz drumming instantly. And I'm sure most of you are not guilty of all of these bad habits, uh, but maybe there's one in, one or two in there that you got to be mindful of, just like me. I always had to be mindful of my snare drum dynamic, or I had to be mindful of not feathering the bass drum too loud. Um, and even if they're not you, if you're not guilty, maybe you see a drummer, or you meet a drummer, or you hear a drummer, you see them, and maybe they're slouching, you know, trying to be cool, or they're kind of playing too stiff with the ride some, or they're, they're comping too loud, whatever it is. Hey, as the saying goes, teach each one, teach one, right? We're all teachers. So go over to them and say, hey, you know, maybe you could play your snare drum a little uh, quieter, or maybe you could play your bass drum a little quieter, or maybe use more wrists. Um, and when you do that, make sure you let them know who sent you, your boy. All right, so <laughs> uh, until the next time, make sure you practice hard, but practice smart. Take care. Bye-bye.